stripping away our manliness. And we got to come back to the Bible, gain the understanding so that we can get back in order with God and save our nation. Y'all are saviors. Do y'all understand that? My brother right here, what's your name, bro? Trent. Troy. Troy? Uh, you look like you, I can tell you're older than me. But watch this. Were you born in the 70s? No. Born in the 80s? In the 80s. What was going on in, in the midst of our communities during the 80s? It was a big epidemic. What did they call it? Many, many families were destroyed during this epidemic. The crack <laughs> epidemic, right? But what was going on 20 years before that? It was a rising of our people where we were starting to acknowledge ourselves and, and, and starting to come together in unity, in, in masses, learning the importance of being a nation. You understand that? But read Proverbs 3 and 31. This is what happened to us as we started going through the various epidemics and the downtroddenness of our people. Read. The book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor. Do you see that amongst our people today? Where we just want to look like the white man, we want to be the white man. Anything that the white man tells us as a people, we gonna go after that before we listen to our own brother. We know. Do, do we see that amongst our people? And guess what we're reading? We're reading the Bible. Most people are saying that the Bible is a white man's book. Most of those people who say that have never read the Bible to understand the identity of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. In the Bible, it will prove that we are the children of Israel. Of course. These names that God gave us were taken away from us where? In slavery. You ever seen a root? Kunta Kinte got his name beaten out of him? You understand? Did you know that that was in the Bible? Let's get that. Let's, just so you hear these things and you get understanding who you are. You are an Israelite. That's what the Bible is going to teach you. So what happened to the Israelites? Verse 37. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So, open up your flyer. Open up your flyer, second page. If I'm not mistaken, it's right slave ship. And then you also will be able to see some of the slave passages, right, that we took on those slave ships. But when we got to these various places, we would lose our identity. They would mock us for losing our identity. They would create crafty counsel to keep us away from learning our identity. That's why today we say, I'm American. I don't know where I came from in Africa. You got a lot of Negroes right now, staunch. I'm American. I, but in America, what do other Americans call us? Niggas, spits, coons. Matter of fact, with this free speech thing that's about to go on with Elon Musk and this new, you, Negroes are going to find out just how much the other nations hate you. We've been learning, we've been, for the last uh, uh, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, we've been trying to love the white man's soul. But we're about to find out just how much he hates us. That's why the Bible says, don't envy your oppressor. They call him specifically. Don't envy him and choose none of his ways. Because if he hates you from the beginning, you think he's going to stop hating you? No. He gonna hate us until he sees us off the face of the planet. But all praises to the most high God, his devices will never work on us. You understand that? What we gotta do is get back in tune with God's laws, 
Otherwise, we will continue to be mocked here in America, where we have been made slaves and we remain as slaves. Do you still feel like that? Yeah, we do. It's, it, if we didn't feel like a slave, you still pay taxes? That means that somebody rules over you, right? You get that uneasy feeling when you see cop light, uh, them red and blue lights? That shows that we still running from the paddy wagon. Like, just like what we did in slavery. My brother right here. My brother right here. What's your name? Justin. What we're dealing with, we're reading the Bible. A lot of our people have never heard the Bible taught correctly. Therefore, we're lost. Right? Would you agree? So as a people, the first thing we need to clarify is our identity. Read that verse again. This is where we left off. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. Uh -huh. And thou shalt become an astonishment. So, the Israelites, in their disobedience, what happened is the Israelites were given God's commandments. God said, if you break these commandments, curses will come upon you. Our elders in our neighborhoods, communities, have been saying that we are, we've been living under a curse. That's biblical. But the curse is because of our disobedience. So what would happen to us? It said we would become an astonishment. When we see our people on Facebook Live and World Star Hip Hop getting killed, that's an astonishment. And guess what? Other people make money off watching us die in the streets. That's right. It got famous on World Star Hip Hop. Then they started putting it on Facebook Live. Now, police officers are saying, well, shoot, if they can get away with it and it be made famous, well, shoot, let us go ahead and make some money and we'll take this paid leave and then we'll come back to another police force and we'll just chill out after that because we done made millions of dollars off of it. Right? That's the astonishment. How did our people fall so far down? That's an astonishment. Y'all are kings on the face of the earth. But nowadays we walk around as gangbangers, drug dealers, baby daddies, foolishness, drug addicts. That's an astonishment. Read on. A proverb. And a byword. A proverb. A proverb. If you want to hide anything from a black man, where do you, where do you put it? In a book. That is a proverb that has been against our people from... Since when? Still not none of right? If you want now, what book do they want to hide from the black man? We're reading it right now, the Bible, because guess what? When we start teaching our people that you, black men, Hispanic men, Native American men, are the Israelites, they have a problem with that. They have a severe problem. All Kyrie Irving did was say he liked the movie Hebrews to Negroes. They took five hundred thousand dollars from him. Right. Kanye West. All he had to do is go on Drink Champs and say that we're the real Jews. The other ones aren't the real ones. Quoting uh, or paraphrasing the Bible. Guess what? He did? he lost his he lost his deal with Adidas. He lost who else? Or Balenciaga. I'm all praising the Most High because that means ba uh, Baal or another god is our king. An evil king is our king, right? So what is happening is the awakening of our people. Our people are being taught the Bible correctly to understand who you are according to the Bible. So when you look at this sign, this is the name that God gave you from the beginning. But this is what they made us into in slavery. American black is what they made to the tribe of Judah. West Indian blacks is what they did to the tribe of Benjamin. Haitians is what they made out of the tribe of Levi. All these names have special important meaning to your God. That's why he named you that. But the white man and his dastardly wicked devices, what he did is he beat your name out of you. He took your culture away from you. And guess what? He did so good at it that nowadays we don't even want to find out what it is. That's how good he did at stripping away our manliness and we got to come back to the Bible gain the understanding so that we can get back in order with God and save our nation y'all are saviors do y'all understand that That's right. matter of fact get that an overdive we got, we, because what has happened to our, our black men here in society is we have been beaten stripped of our true manly nature they, they want us to shave off our beard so they can call us boy they want us to shave off our head so that we can be acceptable in this society but God is making us acceptable when we keep his commandments. You got that? Obadiah verse 21? The book of Obadiah verse 21. Uh -huh. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge 
the man of Esau. So you ever heard somebody say, well, yeah, we can't judge one another. We can't judge. That's what God made you. Judges, officers, men to put things in order. But what has happened to it, that order has been beaten out of us. We don't want to declare judgment. Oh, you can't talk that way to me. That's misogyny. That's our, our toxic masculinity. No, that's God's order. And God says when us as men are in order, he makes us saviors to our people. If we are the solution. You understand that? If we want to stop seeing baby mama, baby daddy drama, we can fix that. If we want to stop seeing our children strung out on drugs and strung out in bad health, all this foolishness, we can stop that. Bring it out. Read it again. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion. That's who you are. As you learn your nationality, you're going to become a savior because you're going to save your people by teaching God's laws and being an example of keeping God's laws. Read on. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. The judge the Mount of Esau. Who is Esau? The so-called white man. That's who that is. Point blank period. God calls him red and hairy. Matter of fact, what do we call the so-called white man here in the South? Rednecks. Why? God already called him that from the beginning. He said when they came out of the womb, they were red and hairy. But based on their hand, by their hand, go to Job 9 and 24. This is what he has put millions and billions and trillions of dollars to do this is what they, this is why we got to cast judgment on them we got to call them the wicked that's what the bible is going to tell us we're going to have to con call them the wicked because they have been our oppressors don't our women try to look like him with the blonde weaves and the red weaves and the green weaves yeah, we just had one leave it here talking about uh oh, she was talking a lot of foolishness but you know what where did that foolishness get into the mind of our black women through his mouth while she was laying in bed with him while we were stripped away from our wife while they were laying with our women they whispered in their ear to figure out ways to kill us we were in subjection to our enemy for our disobedience to God now most, most importantly we were breaking God's laws and we still do that today but now it's going on for so long that now our, our own women see more protection in those who hate them than they do in us. But they did a great job. Read, read what the hand of Esau has done to our people. Read. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Who in the world? When you think of the richest men in the world, right? What faces come up? Ah. When you look at your money, what faces are on your money? Huh. Who runs the government that we pay our taxes to? After we get the money from working on their job and then we still got to pay them back taxes. Who runs the government? Huh. So when God is saying the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked, you got to be able to identify the wicked. And guess what they did along with their wickedness? They made sure that whatever we would choose to believe in, it would either have to be rooted in his mindset or it would have to be attributed to his glory. In Christianity... Don't they say that this is Jesus? Okay, so where do we get this image from when the Bible says something different? No, I want you to hold that, Job, because I want you to read the last part. Read the last part on that. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. So, this, the hand, through the hand of the wicked, he's going to cover the faces of the judges. Now, earlier, who did, we, who did I state, that, the, or who did the Bible state that uh, is the judges of the earth? y'all no. so how did he cover y'all faces from being seen as the judges he put his own image there he put his own image there so what color is Jesus Christ let's get that in, in Revelation just to prove it everybody's heard it but they ain't really get gravity from it and oh yeah I heard you know Willie had this that and third that's why a lot of brothers get dread like, yeah you know Samson and Jesus had Willie here but what color was his skin? What color was his skin? Then what did he represent as that man? Let's get that, read. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So white in color, woolly in texture. Read on. As white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because he drank wine in moderation. Matter of fact, you mind taking off your uh, hat? Because you, yeah, it's all right. 
we, we can deal with that. We can deal with that. Because guess what? Christ, he kept the commandment to not make his head bald. Now, take it off, take it off. Now, I'm going to show you what commandment we're keeping. All right? So, it's good. You, you're actually helping me help you. All right? Read on. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine bread. So, watch this. My brother got his toes out. You know what I'm saying? We're going to use you as an example. So, is his feet, or the top of his feet, any different color than the rest of his body? Because nowadays, they try to dupe the black man and the black woman by saying, well, it doesn't matter what Jesus Christ looks like. You want to know why they say now it doesn't matter? Because we're figuring out what he does look like. So now they try to cast doubt in your mind so that you can stay loving white man Jesus, who's going to eventually do something to you, and then you got to make a decision whether he's wrong or right. Well, the Bible already called him wicked, so he's already wrong by default, right? So it says his feet. Like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brown. Now, what kind of brown? Read on. As if they burn in a furnace. You burn anything, what happens to it? Does it get lighter or darker? It gets darker. So, Christ is not light skin. Everybody want to say he's Middle Eastern. They want him to look like Ahmed in the store. Right? But the Bible says as if he burned in a furnace. He black, black. Now, let's find out how he stood on business. Read. And his voice at the sound of many waters. So, was Christ a weak man? If his voice was like the sound of many waters, was he a weak man when he was casting judgment? No. Nah. So, don't Christ look like you? Don't Christ look like you? Don't Christ look like you? Now, what does his brothers and sisters look like? If Christ is a black man, what his brothers and sisters look like? What does this kindred look like? What does mama and his daddy look like? So that means that that same family that Christ came from got to look like him because ain't no way in this world uh, two white men can make a black baby. And a matter of fact, the reason why I say two white men making a black baby is because we call ourselves African-American, right? A Leo Scipio, uh, uh, Scipio Africana, white man. Amerigo Vespucci, white man. You didn't even know that, did you? He was like, hey, right? But they call us African American, and you were born before the term African American was made famous. You, what year were you born? 81. The term African American came about 83, 84. So he's older than the term African American, but we call ourselves that. We think we being fancy. I ain't black. I'm African American. That means you're still property of the United States of America. Yes, yes. Jesse Jackson came up with a phrase right before he ran for president. So what is happening is they're paying millions and billions of dollars to keep us lost and keep us in sin. Now, watch this. And I'm glad you took off your hat. And the uh, reason why we don't have our heads covered is because we're in subjection to Christ. Christ is teaching us the way we're, we're, our faith is in Jesus Christ. But we got to identify which one. This one to teach you Christmas. This one to teach you Passover. Things that are in the Bible, this Jesus Christ endorses. Feast of dedication, which we are in the midst of, we're closing it up today. You understand? But this Jesus Christ, did you realize that on Christmas, they were selling us as gifts? No. We were those gifts on Christmas here in America. We were sold, stripped away from our families. Thanksgiving, they were killing the tribe of Gad and Reuben. They celebrate that thing with the turkey and the dressing and the and, and the cranberry sauce to symbolize the blood that was shed, the stuff and the deal with all the atrocities that they did and, and tucked under the rug, right? Hundred seventy-seven million of our brothers killed, and they celebrate that thing on Thanksgiving. Matter of fact, in history there was more than one Thanksgiving because they would kill off tribes little by little. So that day that they finished the war, they called it Thanksgiving. So what God were they thinking? White man Jesus. But is that in the Bible? I thought thou shalt not kill is in the Bible. If everybody is going to get salvation, thou shalt not kill is in the Bible. The Bible wasn't given to them. Point blank period. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is.
unity. Nation is you. It's nation time. Oh!